Um, Flylens85, there is no OSD tab in Betaflight. My guess is it was flashed without the without the OSD option in the uh, build options. So go to the firmware flasher tab. Go down to... Can you even... I think well, you, you gotta, can even see the options. Go ahead, Blunty. Could also just be it's off in the config tab, right? Oh, you're right. You're right. I forget about that because I never turn it off. See? That's why I keep you around. <laughs> It's only funny because it's like the idea that I would possibly not keep you around is just a joke. Yeah, so it could be turned off here. And if it's turned off there, you see it disappears. Yeah, check that. Because like, I don't think it was, it's, it just doesn't seem likely that it was flashed without the option. You'd have to manually remove the option here in the firmware flasher tab. So is there a way, what version of Betaflight is on here? 451. If I go to the CLI and type status, does it show what options it was flashed with? I swear I've seen a list of the options it was flashed with. Where have I seen that? Okay, so I can tell you the way to do it. I don't go. think you can get it in the CLI. How do you get but it? The way you, act, the way you actually do it is you type status and then okay. that gives you the build ID number, and then you copy that build mm. ID number into a URL on the website, and it'll give you the build block. I swear I've seen it though. In like, I'm, I haven't. I know. I know what you're talking about, but I never do that. I wonder if I reflash it with like an. Hang on. Ignore the risk. I put I the link in chat so you can show people to live dangerously. Okay. You just tack it on the end. What is Mars talking about? Bardwell only like 5% of pilots want it to be this complex. KISS was ignored in every design decision possible. Who ignored design decisions? Is Betaflight or Edge TX? Who's Mars? Who's Mars talking about? All right. I swear I've seen this. I don't know. Damn it. I swear. I mean, you can do status if you flash core, this. right? Can't you do it if you flash core because then it shows you what's enabled? I've enable. seen a list of build options. Where have I seen it? Only in the build log. <laughs> I know. I know it's there. I know it's there. But I didn't stumble across that. All right, I'm not going to waste a lot more. I'm not going to waste a lot more chat time trying to solve this. I swear. It says it's in the setup tab, bottom right. Aha! I knew I'd seen it. <laughs> Yes! Yes! I knew I'd seen it! I bet it's pulling that off the website. I don't know. That's it. I knew I'd seen it. Ha! Build build log. Here's the build log. Yeah, so there it is on the website. So that's interesting. They have made it possible. I was begging for this. They have made it possible to find the options. Okay. That's cool. That's nice to know. Uh, Kiss was ignored in every case possible. Who's he mad at? HTX? Or Beta Flight? Just trying to decide. He said Beta ignore me. <laughs> um, yeah, no. Beta Flight. Only like 5% of pilots want it to be this complex. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. You know, the thing is, this is not a paid program, so. It's true. Well, and the other thing is, like, okay, so here's what I'll say. Do you remember when uh, Flight 1 made it possible to do your entire configuration via a wizard in the OSD? 
So literally, you plug in a new flight controller, you never plug in USB at all, you power up your video transmitter, and you put your goggles on channel uh, race one, and the flight controller automatically finds the video transmitter, talks to the video transmitter, puts it on race one, and then in your goggles, you see video, and you see in the on-screen display, searching for your receiver. And it searches all the UARTs and finds your receiver. And then it's like, move your sticks. And it does a whole stick calibration routine, just like a simulator does. You don't have to do any manual setup. It just automatically does your channel mapping, your endpoints, everything. Aux mode says, flip your arm switch. You flip the arm switch. Aux mode setup. That was legit. It does your motor wizard. Does everything. Automatically walks you through it. You Basically, at the end, you have a quadcopter that you're ready to fly. You didn't touch USB. You didn't do any manual configuration. That was legitimately groundbreakingly innovative. I would like to point out that the Immersion RC Vortex did it first years before, but nobody, nobody, it was popular in its day, but the Flight 1 putting it on a flight controller that anybody could put in a build was a big deal. It was legitimately innovative, made life easier and better, and didn't have a lot of downsides because it mostly worked. Um, there are other times when somebody says, well, I've made it simpler. And you have made it simpler, but also you've made it more difficult because you've gotten rid of options that I want some of the time, you know? Um, and, uh, like, I, I find it frustrating sometimes. Well, we're talking about, you said keep it simple. So, like, I assume you're talking about KISS. You're talking about things like KISS Ultra. You're talking about things like, like Fet Tech Alpha and so forth. There are times when, like, the quadcopter won't arm, and I'm like, why won't it arm? And I look in the configurator, and nowhere in the configurator does it tell me why the quadcopter won't arm. It's just like, I don't know, good luck. You gotta, you figure it out. And I'm like, well, that's simple, but it's not easier, and it's not better. So, um, yeah, Betaflight doesn't try to keep it simple. They don't. Uh, they try to support what they support. Uh, lots of different hardware. Uh, and uh, lots of different capabilities. And if you want simple, then there's other stuff out there. But there's a reason why St Betaflight and iNav and RGPilot are powerful and complicated. Because when you make things simple, you also remove functionality most of the time. And w when you want a wide variety of functionality, it tends not to be simple. You know? So, there you go. Could it, and the other thing is, as Blunty pointed out, all of this development is done for free by people in their spare time. I don't know how true that is. I mean, that's the story. But, like, I don't know. Like, is, is there no Betaflight dev who gets paid to... I mean, there's a lot of people relying on Betaflight for a lot of things. It seems like there might be some opportunity to monetize that. It's hard for me to believe that no one is. My but, understanding is know. the monetizing of that happened with AT Betaflight, and they got kicked out of Betaflight for doing it. Them's principles, baby. Uh...